Welcome to Fenway Park on a beautiful night for baseball as we get ready for the middle game of a three-game series between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Boston Red Sox. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, tonight we see Jake Peavy's first start in a Red Sox uniform after the trade deadline. Jake Peavy tonight, certainly some pressure on him in his first start, but he'll also be matched up against a very good pitcher in Patrick Corbin, who's on the mound tonight for the Diamondbacks. Good pitching matchup. Corbin was selected to his first National League All-Star team this year as a 3.28 earned run average in road games on the season. Overall, 12-2 with a nifty 2.24 ERA. And Jake Peavy has won six of his last seven games when he's pitched it and lasted six innings. Peavy's 13 wins and 194 Ks and 29 starts against Arizona are the most against any major league team. And Jake Peavy ready for his first start in a Red Sox uniform. We welcome in Jerry Remy and Jerry. The Red Sox wanted to get a big starter. They get one of Jake Peavy. Tonight's his first go around. Well, the two guys that we kept hearing about were Cliff Lee, obviously with Philadelphia, and Jake Peavy. And they ended up with Jake Peavy. And I think that's the guy that they really wanted. Now, the concern tonight is, you know, anytime you go to a new ball club, pitch at home for the first time. You're a little bit nervous no matter how many times you've pitched at the Major League level, and Jake Peavy certainly has pitched a lot. But the fact is, if he can try to get through those first inning nerves, he should be able to settle down and give the Red Sox a good outing in this ball game tonight. I think in the long run, Don, this is going to be a very positive move for the Red Sox as they march toward the playoffs uh, this season because Peavy's a veteran guy that's a very good pitcher with plenty of experience. Well, the Red Sox have been rolling right along. They're still atop the American League East, and the offense has been clicking at all cylinders, especially in the home run department. We'll talk home runs when we come back to Fenway Park right after this. home runs. It was not enough as Arizona took game one of the series, but the Red Sox offensively to begin the year, manufacturing runs. Not so much here in the second half. It's been about the long ball for Boston. Home run power really since the All-Star break for Boston. Red Sox are tied for second in the American League with 18 home runs since the break, led by Mike Napoli and Stephen Drew with three each during that time frame. Red Sox are now home in seven consecutive games, totaling 12 home runs in that time, and the prior four games, they had only one home run. Team record for games with consecutive home runs this season is eight. Well, the Red Sox and Arizona Diamondbacks getting ready for game two of this three-game series. We're back with the first pitch for Fenway right after this.
Ikea. McDonald's of Boston. Salem 5 Bank and Pedroia's World. Toyota's official site for deals by a Toyota.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Welcome back to Fenway Park on a beautiful night here from Fenway. Nothing but blue skies above right now. The lights are on and the Red Sox trying to bounce back into the win column tonight after dropping last night's contest 7 to 6 to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And of course the excitement of the Red Sox and Jake Peavy's first start in a Red Sox uniform tonight. With us tonight is Jamie Erdahl. Jamie? Well, Don, our Geico quote of the day comes from Arizona's Cody Ross. The former Boston outfielder went four for five in his return to Fenway last night. And his seventh inning solo home run was the margin of victory for the Diamondbacks and probably icing on the cake for Ross. But after the game, he did say, obviously, I want to come in here and play and perform well. Anytime you play against one of your old teams, you want to do that. But I have no hard feelings toward anybody in this organization. Well, he had a good night last night, a terrific night last night with four hits in the game. And I guess Jerry is certainly, when you do play your old organization, especially where he kind of viewed it as if they didn't want him back here, that uh, he certainly is a little extra going. Oh, anytime, anytime you go to another ball club and you play your ex team for the first time, or actually the first series, uh, like he's doing right now, uh, there's a little extra motivation. It's uh, whether you've been traded, whether you leave as a free agent, uh, you all feel the same way when you come back to play against him. And it is a very strange feeling to play against some guys that you were with last year that you got to know very well and Cody Ross had himself one heck of a night last night. Well certainly he has performed very well here at Fenway Park in his time with the Red Sox and this is a place that he's very comfortable in and uh, hopefully Jake Peavy can make him uncomfortable tonight as the Red Sox try to bounce back in game two of the series. Always exciting after you have made a trade deadline deal and your first start coming up here in a Red Sox uniform and Tonight is that night for Jake Peavy. Yes, we're spending his season with the Chicago White Sox. He will lead the Red Sox out onto the field tonight. As the Sox take the field, let's check out the Arizona batting order for tonight's game. Gerardo Parra leading it off in center field with Aaron Hill at second base. Paul Goldschmidt is at first base with Eric Chavez, the DH batting fourth. Martin Prado at third base with Cody Ross in right field batting sixth. Jason Kubel in left field bat seventh. Will Nieves doing the catching again tonight. And Cliff Pennington, the former Oakland A, is at shortstop. He bats ninth. Jason Kubel with 299 average against Boston in his career. Let's take a look at the season numbers for Jake Peavy. Of course, season spent as a member of the White Sox. Tonight is his 14th start of the year. He's 8-4 with a 4.28 earned run average. 76 strikeouts to 17 walks. And opponents hitting at 244 against Jake Peavy. The Red Sox defense is brought to you on Nessa by Southwest Airlines. They are eighth in the league with 59 errors on the season. Brandon Snyder will be at third base. Steven Drew, the shortstop. Got to Pedroia at second. And Mike Napoli, the first baseman. Left to right, Johnny Gomes, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Shane Victorino. And Jared Saltalamaki doing the catching for Peavy. Eric Cooper has the plate tonight, calling the balls and strikes with Paul Schreiber at first base, Chad Fairchild at second, and the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, is at third base. Tonight's game is available in Spanish by pushing the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos. A well, comfortable night here at Fenway Park. Blue skies above, light breeze. It's 75 degrees. Perfect as we start tonight. Breeze out to center at 13 miles per hour, and the forecast is partly cloudy for the remainder of the evening. The big crowd on hand here at Fenway Park as Gerardo Parra leads it off here. Jake PV's career in a Red Sox uniform. Ready to go with his first pitch. And a swing and a foul tip for strike one. Now from PV, you'll see the fastball, the slide of the changeup, sometimes two different fastballs, the cross seam and the sinking fastball. There's a fly ball to center field. Jacoby Ellsbury has it sized up. One down. So far is retired, and that brings up Aaron Hill. 
Now Jake Peavy 13 and 12 with a 4.66 earned run average in 29 career starts against the Diamondbacks. Of course, that was when he was a member of the San Diego Padres for the most part. Making his first start against Arizona since 09 as the pitch is in there or actually just missing off the outside edge for ball one. TV acquired the day before the trade deadline on the 30th of July. And that's a strike one and one. Here are the numbers 4.66 ERA in his career against Arizona. Goes around. And Hill is down one and two. That's the slider there from PB. It's a hard one, 87 miles an hour. Swing and a miss. Jake Peavy's got his first strikeout in the Red Sox uniform. Two down. Well, stays outside against Aaron Hill, both with the slider and then the follow up pitch, the fastball for the strikeout. 92 on the fastball that time from Peavy to pick up the strikeout. Two down here in the top half of the first inning. Paul Goldschmidt, the batter. First baseman having a very good year. All star. 25 home runs, 88 runs batted in, and the average at 301. And the last start for Peavy in a White Sox uniform. Defeated the Tigers 7 4 July 25th at U.S. Cellular Field. Lose the strike in there. Got four runs and three home runs in his last outing. I think he's the type of guy that could come to the big stage of Boston and really thrive in this setting. A veteran who, you know, gets it, realizes you're in a pennant chase here, and I think he'd bring his game to a whole new level. And as he misses outside, and he's the type of guy that would appear to fit in with this clubhouse particularly well. Well, that's exactly what John Farrell was talking about. So they've got a veteran guy that's had success, that's not afraid to pitch in a market like Boston, and is a very good guy in the clubhouse. So they got the whole combination. Two out walk here to Goldschmidt. First base runner of the night for the Diamondbacks. And Eric Chavez coming up. And long time Oakland A who has bounced around in the last couple of years. It's amazing how many former Oakland A's find their way to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Chavez having a good season, hitting a 305 coming into tonight's game. And Homer's 37 runs driven in to go along with the 305 batting average. And right now he's on a four-game hitting streak in his career. He is one for six against Peavy. Runner goes, a pitch up and in. The throw from Sultan Amaki is going to be in time. They got him. Goldschmidt gunned down by Salty. Ends the top of the first. Red Sox coming up.
Back at Fenway, the Diamondbacks don't score in the top of the first inning. Red Sox coming up in the bottom of the first, and the Sox lineup is brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off in center field. Shane Victorino in right field with Dustin Pedroia at second base. David Ortiz at DH. Mike Napoli at first base with Johnny Gomes in left field. Jared Saltonamaki doing the catch. He just threw out a base runner. Stephen Drew at shortstop bats eighth, and Brandon Snyder is at third base. He bats ninth. For the Diamondbacks on the mound is Patrick Corbin. His numbers are brought to you by Nissan. His 22nd start of the year, 12 and 2 with a 2.24 earned run average. He's got 123 strikeouts to 36 walks, and opponents have only mustered a 205 batting average against him. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off and taking strike one. Ellsbury up over 300. 303 with five homers and 35 runs batted in. Riding an eight game hitting streak coming into tonight's game. Three twenty four during the streak couple doubles a triple a home run. And he strikes out. Pitch down and away. Ellsbury down by way of the K for the first out of the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at Aaron. Arizona's defense. They are second in the National League with 51 errors on the season. Martin Prado at third base. Cliff Pennington, the shortstop. Aaron Hill at second. Paul Goldschmidt, the first baseman. Left to right, Jason Gubel. Gerardo Parra in center field. And Cody Ross, the right fielder. Will Nieves doing the catching for Corbin. One down here in the bottom of the first inning, and it takes us to Shane Victorino. Torino at 282. Six homers and 31 runs driven in. One for five in last night's game. Had a double. Chops this to third. Prado on the backhand. Throws him out. Two down. Well, with 50 games to go in the Red Sox season, you can still import the schedule into your favorite desktop, web, or mobile device and be reminded about opponents and start times each game day. Go to Nesson.com slash schedule to import it now. Two down here in the bottom of the first inning, and here is Dustin Pedroia. Corbin out with that blazing fastball at 95 miles an hour against Pedroia. The only batter that's faced him before in the Red Sox lineup is Victorino. So grounded foul off the facing of the Diamondbacks dugout third base way. Corbin acquired on July 25th of 2010 with Joe Saunders at the time. Part of the deal for Dan Heron going to the Angels. Corbin coming from the Angels to the Diamondbacks. Someone is fouled off. Corbin originally had been selected by the Angels in the second round in 2009. First career start against Boston. Pedroia lays off and takes ball one. And he comes in at 12 and 2. Arizona as a team are 18 and 3 when he starts games. Foul back and it's one and two. Good live fastball as we mentioned, 94, 95 miles an hour. The slide of the changeup. Pops it up foul back and out of play again. And this at bat will extend to a seventh pitch. Yeah. 2.24 earned run average for Corbin coming in. And he's third among all starting pitchers. Leighton Kershaw 1.87. Matt Harvey at 2.21. Pedroia did not go. 
And it evens at two and two. Good job there for Pedroia holding up on that slider from Corbin. The body's gone, but the uh, bat stays back. Foul and it hangs at two and two. And Pedro turning in a pretty good at bat here against Corbin. David Ortiz on deck as Boston bats here in the first inning. Slowly chopped towards short. Pennington charging his throw will be just in time. Very, very close. A bang bang play. Pedroia thought he beat it out, but Pennington gets him to end the inning. Done with one without a score. Top half of the second inning. Eric Chavez, who was batting the last inning when Paul Goldschmidt was thrown out at second base, leads it off here in the top of the second inning. Chavez, Prado, and Ross to bat here in the second. There's a pop up shift was on, and coming in is Snyder to make the catch in on the grass. First down of the second inning as we check in with Jamie Erdahl. Well, Don, I know you're excited for this one. It's our AT&T poll question, and it's the finalists for the best baseball movies. We've used the fan votes over the past two nights to compile the two last win the four winners from the two last nights. Fans text 536-536 to select from this alphabetical list of finalists. A for Fever Pitch, B for Field of Dreams, C for Major League, or D for The Sandlot. We'll track the results all night, and the winner will be revealed later tonight on Nesson Sports Today after Red Sox postgame. Well, Jamie, clearly A is a terrific choice. And right out of the gate, 32%. And, of course, uh, Don has, well, he was in that movie, so my, that's why he. My first film. That's why he feels that Fever Pitch is going to win this thing, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than what we're seeing right now. It was an interesting day here at the ballpark. If the Red Sox get a big lead tonight, hopefully we can show it to you, but. Uh, Extra Extra was here interviewing yes. Don because of uh, some of his movies. It was Mario Lopez. I, yeah. I really didn't expect that. I, yeah. I was very surprised. Martin Prado. That's here with one out in the inning. And that'll miss outside. Prado, the third baseman for the Diamondbacks. Inning at 267. Nine homers and 43 runs batted in. Prado, the former Atlanta Brave.
Broke into the big leagues with the Braves in 2006. Last year hit a 301 in Atlanta in his final season with the Braves. 10 homers and 70 runs driven in. Most home runs he's had in any season was 15 with the Braves in 2010. Outside for ball four. That's the second walk given up by Jake Peavy of his outing. Hold on a second. Prado thought he had ball four, but apparently, yeah, it's, it's the wrong count. Exactly, and he's got to put all that stuff back on now. Scoreboard, I think, had it at three and one. As you can see, there only four pitches, and uh, there was the fifth. So it's a three-two count right now. That's ball four. And down to first base will go Prado. Now and get his stuff off. So the second walk given up by Peavy of the night. One out, one on, and Cody Ross, the batter. A terrific night he had in his return to Boston last night. Overall at 280, seven homers and 35 runs batted in. Four for five in last night's game. Two doubles, a home run, three runs batted in. Last 19 games, he's hit at 383. Signed by Arizona as a free agent in December. It's a fly ball to center field. Playable for Jacoby Ellsbury is now into right center for the second out of the inning. Ever find yourself guessing what you think is going to happen during every at bat? Well, there's an app for that. MLB Preplay is the official prediction game of Major League Baseball. It's free to download on iOS and Android. Download now at Nesson.com slash preplay and play along during every Red Sox game. Martin Prado at first base, two down here in the second inning, and it brings up Jason Kubel. Let's take the breaking ball for strike one. Kubel hitting at 118 in the last 18 games. And had a couple of hits last night going two for five with an RBI. It's part of the 7 6 Diamondbacks win last night. See Peavy talking to himself on the mound. He's a very emotional guy when he's out there pitching. He's not happy at all about the walk to Prado. And John Farrell said the other day he will talk to himself, and we're seeing that right out of the gate here. In there for strike two, and it's one and two. Strikes out Kubel. Second strikeout for Peavy. David Ortiz will lead it off and we come back to Fenway.
you by Hood, the official dairy of the Boston Red Sox. Follow the Hood Blimp on Facebook and Twitter at Hood Blimp. Now Jake Peavy picking up his second strikeout of the night gets Kubel to end the second inning on a breaking ball. Two strikeouts, two walks so far for Peavy. Breaking ball down and out of the strike zone. That whiff was brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Well, Jake Peavy has two innings under his belt here as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Red Sox offense coming up. David Ortiz, Mike Napoli, and Johnny Gomes. Ortiz at 323. 21 home runs, 71 runs batted in. David one for four in last night's game. Comes in with a six game hitting streak. And takes a strike over the outside corner from Corbin. Big shift put on by the uh, Diamondbacks. Aaron Hill way out in the right field grass. David, an all star for the fourth straight year, ninth time in his career. Outside, three and one. Corbin had a one, two, three first inning on 14 pitches. Strikeout, two ground outs. Ortiz through the shift into right field, a base hit. Red Sox have their first base runner of the night. Now David get himself back in a fastball count with the Corbin falling behind him. He has to come with the well, didn't have to, but he does come with the fastball on the three-one count, and Ortiz pulls it for the base hit right through the shift. Certainly the pitch that Ortiz was looking for, three and one. Well, now the seven gamer hitting at 370 during the streak. A bit of first base, nobody out. Mike Napoli, the batter. 260 average, 14 homers, and 64 runs batted in. Napoli in last night's game, two for three. He's also hit by a pitch in last night's game. A three for 16 on the current homestand. Inside for ball two. He's allowed one earned run or less in the last four starts, says Patrick Corbin. This one will get away. David will head for second base. Ortiz gets there standing as it gets off Will Nieves. Wild pitch this time. Looked like it might have been a changeup that goes down in the dirt and it deflects off the glove of Nieves. Ortiz able to move in the scoring position with nobody out. Wild pitch charged to Corbin. Back and out of play. Full count now for Napoli. Johnny Gomes waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the last half of the second inning. Corbin this season on the road has gone four and one at the 3.28 earned run average in nine road starts on the year. 25th pitch. 
And Napoli will take ball four. First walk given up by Corbin. No, the Sox involved in interleague play. Tonight's Cold Drive Facts brought to you by Coors Light focuses on the senior circuit. Chris Johnson has tied a Braves franchise record with his eighth straight multi-hit game last night. First Brave to do so since Hank Aaron back in 1959. And tonight the Cardinals will go for 13 plus runs scored in a third straight road game. The last National League team to do that was the Pirates in 1928. First two have reached here against Patrick Corbin in the second inning. Ortiz at second, Napoli at first, and Johnny Gomes coming up. Gomes had last night off. Overall, 236, eight homers, and 27 runs batted in. This he drove in the game tying run in the ninth inning on Thursday night against Seattle. Sits safely in 15 of his last 20 games. That's the kind of game, Don, when you got a guy like Corbin out there who's been pitching the way he has pitched all season long. You get opportunities like this, you have to take advantage of them. A couple of base runners, nobody out. On the corner for strike one. Gomes has been good in this spot, hitting at 333 with runners in scoring position. Overall, hitting at 305 in his last 29 games. Strike over the inside corner. Gomes didn't think so. Change up that time, and Gomes, uh, Gomes thought it was too low. Just touching the bottom of the strike zone. Swing and a miss, and Gomes strikes out. That is the second strikeout for Patrick Corbin, first out of the second inning. First strikeout came in a breaking ball. This time it's the changeup down and into Gomes. Almost the identical pitch he took on the previous one. So two on, one away. And yeah, Jared Saltalamaki coming up. Salty at 263, nine home runs and 41 runs driven in. Defensively, he's already contributed tonight. He threw out Paul Goldschmidt, trying to steal second base in the first inning. And there for strike one. Now, well, right now, that low pitch going is a strike for a Koopa behind home plate. Five game hitting streak for Salta Lavakia coming in. One hopper to second that explodes on Hill. He flips to second to get nobody. Could have been a double play, but unable to handle the toss was Cliff Pennington after him and he. Pretty good play on a ball that kind of exploded on him, and the Red Sox have him loaded now. Yeah, Hill made a very nice play on this, but the drop at second base by Cliff Pennington. On the hand flip, it's off to the left a little bit, but one that they should have should have been handled for at least a force out at second. Hill did a good job knocking that ball down and getting that shuffle throw to second base. No catch by Pennington. Napoli safe. They have not ruled on the play yet. Bases are loaded now for the Red Sox. One out for Stephen Drew. Drew takes strike one. I would think it would go as an error on the shortstop. That's just from what I saw on the replay. They have gone in another direction. Andrew uh, Aaron Hill getting the error at second base. Saltalamaki reaching on a fielder's choice. And the error charge to Hill. 
I didn't think it was a bad toss do you. It didn't seem that bad. It was certainly to the glove side of Pennington, but it looked like one he could handle, uh, could have handled for the force out. Drew with a swing and a miss, strikes out. Big strikeout for Corbin. It's out number two of the inning, his third K of the night. Yeah, Corbin staying with the breaking ball that time against Drew with the bases loaded. Slide it down and away once he quickly got ahead. Bases filled with Red Sox, two down here in the second inning. And here's Brandon Snyder. 235, two homers, seven runs batted in. He came into the game last night at first base for the Red Sox defensively. And he lines one to right field. Cody Ross will get there on the running catch. Good bid by Snyder. Red Sox leave him loaded. We're scoreless through two. against cancer at your local Dunkin Donuts stop into participating Dunkin restaurants through tomorrow donate a dollar and you'll receive a cup cutout display your name in store the Dunkin Donuts and Baskin Robbins Community Foundation and the Jimmy Fund thank you for your support only well, Evis leading it off here for the Diamondbacks in the top half of the third inning Evis Pennington and Para scheduled to bat eight nine and one I'm going to miss. And yeah, it's a 356, no homers, and 14 runs batted in. Well, Jake PV born in Mobile, Alabama. Made his major league debut June of 2002 at the age of 21 as a member of the San Diego Padres. Won the National League Cy Young Award during his 2007 season after winning the pitching Triple Crown that year. 1 2 pitch. Swing and a foul tip that glances off Salt of Amakia. And obviously the first time that uh, PV and Salt Lamarca have worked together so you may see quite a bit of shaking off tonight. This foul tip just eludes the uh, webbing of the glove of Salt Lamarca.
One two pitch is lined into right field. Will Nieves with a solid single to right. That's the first hit off Jake Peavy in the game. Send it down to Jamie. Well, despite tonight being Jake Peavy's debut as a member of the Boston Red Sox, we have proof that he's already pretty familiar with Fenway Park. Last July, he pitched here for the first time with the White Sox. He made his way out to the Green Monster with his two oldest sons, Jacob and Wyatt, who you can see here in this picture. He also signed the inside of the Green Monster, and there are hundreds of signatures out there. We tried to find his name, but here's hoping that Peavy has a long career here in Boston so we can find his signature and show you at some point. Well, he appears to be very happy to be part of this pennant race as this one is sent foul off to the left. The White Sox this season really struggling through the year. Chicago last in the American League Central. They're 22 games out, so it has not been a lot of fun to be in Chicago with the White Sox this season. The Pennington, former Oakland A, 241 with a home run, 17 runs batted in. Star three times PV 05, 07, and 2012. Mentioned the Cy Young in 2007. Back in 04, he led the National League and earned run average. Also in 07. And has a gold glove on his resume. This is in the air to deep right field, down the line towards the pole, and a foul ball. That's a change up that time from PV and Pennington out in front of it. Looking for a second home run of the season, but it goes foul. There's the off speed pitch in Pennington right down that right field line, but in foul territory. Swing and a miss. Pennington couldn't hold up, and he strikes out. Third K for Jake Peavy. Now Peavy going to the breaking ball to the inside corner. The pit zone on Nesson is brought to you by Amica. Amica Insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. And they have his at first base. One down in the inning, and Gerardo Parra. It's his second at bat tonight against Jake Peavy. Flight out to center field in the first inning. Second time through now for Peavy. Same misses in the dirt for ball one. Arizona coming in three and a half games back at the Dodgers in the National League West. Started this road trip in Tampa Bay, then had a makeup game in Texas before coming here to Boston. So they've been well traveled on this trip. Popped up. Foul ground and Snyder. Dancing down the line to make the catch and foul ground. Out number two. Gulf Oil is proud to be the official electricity supplier of the Boston Red Sox. Two down, Wilney Evis at first base, and Aaron Hill, former Blue Jays first round draft choice and former Toronto Blue Jay. Struck out his first time up. One of three K's now for Jake Peavy in his outing. On the outside corner.
See Petey yell, like yelling at himself again. He wanted to go inside with that fastball and that fastball away. Tampa Bay taking on the San Francisco Giants again tonight at the Trop in St. Pete. They're in the third inning without a score tonight between the Rays and Giants. Some once come going against David Price in that action tonight as that pitch is in there for strike two. Once again now five and eleven on the year. Slider again here from Peavy just barely picking up the outside part of the plate maybe a little bit off but he gets the call. Swing and a miss, and striking out is Aaron Hill. Second time he's down by way of the K. Evie's fired up. Three innings for Jake Peavy so far as we are scoreless heading to the bottom of the third inning. Red Sox offense coming up top of the order. Jacoby Ellsbury, Shane Victorino, and Dustin Pedroia at about here in the bottom of the third inning. Good look from straightaway center field. Ellsbury struck out swinging in the first inning. One of three strikeouts for Patrick Corbin in this game. There is strike one. Corbin so far tonight. First pitch strikes to seven of ten batters. Leads the majors in that category. 71% first pitch strikes for Patrick Corbin. Hands that time and a broken bat for Ellsbury. In the right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Visit Ace Ticket for great seats at the lowest prices, either for a game or for all of the summer's hottest concerts. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Last half of the third inning, Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off. Red Sox have one hit against Corbin. And the base is loaded with one out in the second. Could not score against Corbin. And Ellsbury strikes out for the second time tonight. That time lunging at a pitch down and away. That's nasty. That's the second time he has struck him out in that slider. And it's a very good one. He gets ahead of those left-handed hitters. He expands that strike zone with that breaking ball. 
Got him on a slider back in the first inning, a slider again here in the third. One down, Shane Victorino, the batter. Shane grounded out to third base in the first inning. Pretty sunset tonight in Boston as Red Sox and Diamondbacks play game two of the series, and that just missed. He had just left it there for an extra second, but Cooper did not call it a strike. He has been calling a lot of low strikes, but not this time. Yeah, so far that pitch has been called a strike by Cooper, but not that time against Victorino. Wide to left, and that's going to get in. Back to the track in the wall. Victorino headed for second base. Now he's going to throw the brakes on. And good thing he did. He had the play in front of him, realized he was not going to make it. And comes up with a one out single. Pretty good job out there by Kubel in left field to get that ball in. It was a change up to Victorino that he hits very hard down that left field line. And when it left the bat, it looked like two bases. But uh, the combination of how hard it was hit by Victorino and a good job by Kubel to get to it is going to hold. Victorino to the single right there puts the brakes on knows he can't get the second base. One out one on for Dustin Pedroia. Dustin grounded out to the shortstop Cliff Pennington in the first inning. Second year for Corbin in the majors last year the Diamondbacks in his first season 22 appearances 17 starts was six and eight last year with a 4.54 earned run average logged 107 innings much different this season. Two and one now to Pedroia. Him looks like he has a pretty good time there in behind the dish. Very active catcher. We mentioned that last <laughs> night. Toss to first and back is Victorino. His lead was not terribly large. Shane 14 out of 17 as he gains his lead now. Outside to Pedroia, three and one. So a couple of lengthy at bats tonight against Corbin. Now that would be the goal for the Red Sox uh, guy as good as this if they possibly can drive that pitch count up as high as you can early in the game. Ground ball deep in the hole at shortstop. Pennington will go to second and it's not going to be in time. Had to go too far to his right and to the third base side is short. Victorino gets in and Pedroia reaches it first. Yeah, that's really the only option that Pennington had. There's no way he gets Pedroia at first base. He tries for the force at second, but Victorino also has very good speed and he beats him with no problem.
One out runners at first and second and David Ortiz the batter is single to right field in the second inning. One for one tonight as Corbin has now given up three hits. Fouls it off. Well, this year the Red Sox will celebrate the 60th anniversary of their partnership with the Jimmy Fund. We salute sponsors like HB Hood, who helped make the Jimmy Fund a major beneficiary of the Red Sox Foundation. Robin has thrown a first pitch strike to each of the last seven batters that he has faced in this game. Well, the Red Sox have two on with one out. And Ortiz rolls it over. Foul 0 and 2. That's back to back sliders to David Ortiz with that man in scoring position. And quickly ahead 0 and 2. And so far in this game, we've seen how tough he can be on lefties. Yeah, he's uh, he's nasty. I mean, uh, he's got a good live fastball, a very sharp breaking slider, change up. Well, the numbers bear that out. Side Ortiz not chasing that, and it's a ball and two strikes. He's been able to bear down with runners in scoring position this season as well. Opponents hitting at 182 with runners in scoring position against Patrick Corbin. Ortiz strikes out. He goes around, can't stop the swing, and he is out number two of the inning. It's five strikeouts now for Corbin. Well, he does the same thing uh, to Ortiz that he did to Ellsbury with two strikes. He goes away outside part of the plate, even off the plate with the slider, and Ortiz cannot control the head of the bat. That is a very difficult pitch for a left-hander to hit, to even make contact on. Red Sox 0 for 5 in this game with runners in scoring position and with two outs another opportunity for Mike Napoli. Mike walked in the second inning. The only free pass served up tonight by Corbin to this point. On the ground foul outside the bag at third. I think that's the first curveball that uh, Corbin has thrown in the ball game tonight, and Napoli out in front of it, pulling it foul. Inside for ball one. That was where he struck out to begin the inning. Victorino with a single to left. Pedroia with the infield hit to short. David Ortiz strikes out. Two outs, two on. Napoli will take the strike over the inside corner. And a 
a swing and a miss. Napoli thought it hit the ground, and it did. Going to right back home pit umpire Cooper right away to make sure. One and two. Foul tip off the bat of uh, Napoli here. Just getting a piece of that. Two pitch popped up in the infield. Shortstop Pennington just to the outfield grass puts it away. And again, Corbin out of the jam. The Red Sox have stranded five in the last two innings. You always put others first. Would it be nice if your bank did the same thing? The products that make life easier and a commitment to those helping in need. Here, your first Eastern Bank. Scoreless as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. Paul Goldschmidt will lead it off. Eric Chavez and Martin Prado. Three, four, and five coming up here for the Diamondbacks in the fourth inning. Jake Peavy gave up a leadoff single in the third inning, but then retired the next three in order on two strikeouts. 43 pitches through the first three innings in his Red Sox debut. And a foul tip for Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt walked in the first inning and was thrown out by Salta Lamacchia, caught stealing two to six to end the first inning. Fouled off to the right. To deep right center field. Back goes Ellsbury towards the pen, and that ball is gone. Up over the bullpen. The end of the bleachers for Paul Goldschmidt, his 26th home run of the year. And the Diamondbacks jump on top one to nothing. Well, he showed his power here last night, and he shows it again tonight. See number 26 of the season, RBI number 89. Fastball up. In the strike zone and away a little bit and Goldschmidt to the opposite field for the home run up over the Red Sox bullpen. Now Chavez fouls it back.
The 0 2 pitch. He is on the ground to the backhand as Napoli. He'll flip to PV. Covering at first base for the first out of the inning. Set it down to Jamie Erdahl. Well, Don, I'm up here outside of Sweet K3, donated tonight by the Jimmy Fund with Raekwon Frazier, a 17-year-old from Lynn, Mass. He's here as a guest of the Jimmy Fund. Raekwon, what brought you here tonight? You know, it's just me being diagnosed with cancer, you know, which is called rhabdomyosarcoma. It's a cancer of a soft tissue. Yep. And uh, you threw out the first pitch here tonight. We watched it. You were a little bit upset with how it went. Tell us about the experience. Was it special? And, and why did you put your head in your hands afterwards? You know, it's a great feeling. But, you know, when you have, like, all these people looking at you, it's a lot of pressure. So you'd be like, oh, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to mess up, you know. But, yeah, um, I, like, I messed up big time. But it's all good, though. It is all good. I dig, yeah. It's a special night at Fenway to do something like that. But it seems like you could handle the pressure, though. You were telling me about one of your very special hobbies that you do. Yeah, it's like... I'm not afraid of pressure, you know. Like if I'm a, hey, if I'm in front of somebody, it's like I'm not gonna be afraid, you know. I have like a really, you know, I have like a lot of confidence in myself, you know. Yeah. It's a special thing, and you're you haven't made a college decision yet. You're ha heading into your senior year of high school. What's a hobby that you keep busy with as a senior in high school? It's me, you know, doing like a lot of music, you know, shows like weddings, birthday parties, and, you know, like I'm thinking about going to school for music or either going to school for law. You know, yeah. That's wonderful. Well, thanks for being a special guest of the Jimmy Fund here tonight and throwing out the first pitch at Fenway. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Well, we want to extend a huge thanks to a longtime friend of the Red Sox and supporter of the Jimmy Fund, Art Kelly, who generously bought one suite per homestand for the Jimmy Fund as part of the ongoing celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Red Sox and the Jimmy Fund's relationship. All right, Jamie, very nice. A nice gesture. And uh, we wish him the best. Two balls, two strikes as Martin Prado batting here with one out will lift it in the air to right field down the line. Victorino over and under to make the catch for the second out here at the top of the fourth inning. So two outs after the leadoff home run by Paul Goldschmidt. And it'll bring up Cody Ross. Ross flied out to center field his first time up. Tampa Bay and San Francisco tied one to one during the third inning at the Trop. Once again against Price in that game from the Trop. Keep an eye on that. Of course, the Red Sox just a game lead over the Tampa Bay Rays atop the American League East. And right now, down one to nothing thanks to the home run by Paul Goldschmidt. Ross will pop it up and racing over his Napoli, but he won't have a play. Well, more Sox baseball comes your way on Nessa tomorrow night after we head to Houston when the Pawtucket Red Sox head to Buffalo to take on the Bisons. Catch atop the pitching matchup is Anthony Renato as he makes his Paw Sox debut. It's great AAA action between the Paw Sox and Buffalo tomorrow night live at 6 p.m. on Nessa. Fly ball to shallow right. Pedroia out. Victorino in. And Victorino calls off Pedroia to make the catch that ends the inning. Paul Goldschmidt goes deep for a home run. Gives the Diamondbacks a 1-0 lead.